Welcome back to Georgia Nesting. I'm Crystal, if you're new here, and this is just a digital diary. Lately, I've been in the season of sharing my pregnancy journey. Currently, I am 39 weeks and five days. So, my baby is due in two days, and it has been quite the waiting process. I have, I feel like I've never, <laughs> I feel like I've literally never waited so long for anything, especially these last couple of weeks where it's been really hot outside. I haven't been able to just go out and do whatever um, because it's been so hot or because I've been so tired or because, you know, it hurts to walk too much, you know? So it's been an interesting season. I've been leaning a lot on quality time with friends and family and just kind of spending time with God and praying a lot more because honestly it's one of those seasons where it's just like all right God I need you you gotta be here I'm here just walk me through it Lord carry me through it because I have not been able to cope <laughs> with being in the house as much as I've been in the house. And then of course as a teacher, you know, going on a sabbatical, it's been, you know, I've had a little bit of uh, FOMO because, you know, the beginning of the year starting back up, I'm seeing all my teacher people, you know, getting ready for the school year. I'm seeing school supplies ads, school supplies set up in the stores, classroom setups, and it's all like, oh my gosh, like, I'm supposed to be doing that. It's like, no, <laughs> you're supposed to be having your baby. He's just not here yet. So it's been an interesting season, but um, good nonetheless, because I'm healthy, the baby's healthy, and we're really just waiting on him to get here and flip our worlds upside down. And that's the part, I mean, I look forward to it in a weird way, kind of like, how is this gonna change my life? You know, you don't really know until it happens to you. People tell you, they can explain it, but you can't really grasp it until like it happens to you. So for me, I'm just waiting for it to happen to me because I'm like, I'm just in the house waiting, Lord. I'm just in the house waiting, so. Today I wanted to share with you all my birth plan and though a teacher I may be, I'm not exactly the best at planning so I tried to keep my plan as simple as possible and kind of just focus on the, I guess, the main important details. What I have is uh, a form the hospital provided and I'm just gonna go off of that because honestly, I there was, you know, if you get on the internet, there's so many things, there's so many resources, there's so many different voices telling you what to do, what you can do, what you shouldn't do, what you probably should do, what you, you know, just too many voices telling you what to do. So for my sake, I was just like, okay, you know what? The hospital provided a form. I'm just gonna complete that form and just kind of go off of uh, the list that they have. Overall, I hope to have, we'll just, I'm sticking to my plan A, like of course, there's a plan B and a plan C, right? Because things might not go as planned the first time, right? Or they might not go as we expect them to. So for the sake of the video, I'm just sharing my plan A as a first time mom, right? I don't really know what to expect, but if I'm going into this assuming everything's gonna go as planned, this is what I would want to happen. First and foremost, my support person I only want one support person and that person is my husband. He's the only one um, outside of my medical team who I want in the delivery room, of course, and he will be the one hopefully to um, cut the cord when we're ready and possibly catch the baby if that's an option for us, right? So as far as like the atmosphere and setting, I prefer to have dim lighting or just natural lighting, like if it's during the day, right? You can't really dim the lights, but like natural lighting, uh, the artificial lighting, it's just uncomfortable, overstimulating. So I would prefer dim lighting 
natural lighting um, and like relaxing music, music from a playlist that I have just to kind of like set the mood and just bring me down to earth and keep me grounded help me stay focused on the task at hand right which is to labor the baby through and deliver I'm shooting for a calm and quiet atmosphere overall as far as like staff medical team I only want the essential staff in the room when it's time like at all times really I don't want any student doctors residents or uh, student nurses or anybody that's not essential in the room I just want it to be simple calm relaxing and I don't need a bunch of people everywhere so that is my goal as far as atmosphere when it comes down to active laboring and trying to like ease pain and like just smooth things over I do prefer you know back in the day when I was <laughs> When I was young and felt so strong, I was like, I always, I've always wanted a natural, unmedicated birth. But, you know, I've been through some things. And so, coming up, like, especially, like, after the pregnancy, I decided that, you know what? I want to look back on my pregnancy and my labor and delivery. I want to look back on my labor and delivery and I don't want to remember how awful the pain was. So I will be opting for epidural for that reason. If the epidural doesn't work, then it wasn't God's will. We'll just say that. But that is my, that's how I'm going about it. That's how I look at it. I just want to be able to look back on this, uh, on the labor and delivery and not be thinking about how awful the pain was. And then of course, if they have options for like, um, laboring in the shower or in the in a tub or something like that I wouldn't mind it but obviously if I have an epidural that's not going to be possible but if the epidural fails of course then we'll have those options available hopefully so that is uh that's what I would want as far as pain management and I think as far as like you know you want people rooting you on in there and Something that I love to hear is that you were made to do this. My body was made to do this. God designed me to do this. And so what's happening is supposed to happen. So being able to hear that from my support team and from my husband and whoever else is in there working with me, I think that's important. That's also, yeah, that is part of my birth plan. <laughs> Telling them what to say to me, so. I think that's important. I mean, that's like the main thing I want to hear. It's like, you were made to do this. Like, just keep reminding me. Like, you were fearfully, wonderfully made. You were a woman designed by God. You know, your body has features different from a man's body for a reason. Like, you were literally, physically made to do this. And that is something that does keep me going and will keep me going. As far as the actual stage of giving birth, like that moment when I'm pushing the baby out, my plan, of course, is have husband catch the baby if he can, and then have an immediate uh, skin to skin. And I think the hospital calls it the golden hour, where they just lay the baby on your chest, and it helps regulate like their heart rate and their breathing and other stuff like that. And they kind of just leave you alone. They don't really take measurements and all that stuff yet. They give you like a good, at least this hospital, they give you a solid hour to be with the baby. It's just skin to skin without everybody, you know, trying to do this and pull the baby this way and that way. I'm also going to be opting for, I do want my husband to cut the cord, but I am opting for delayed cord clamping. I'd like, you know, the cord to stop throbbing, let, you know, the baby get the rest of, the rest of uh, whatever nutrients or uh, blood supply it can from the placenta until it's time, until it stops throbbing really. I'm not opting to keep my placenta. It was something I thought about a lot and I know it's controversial, but at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, I can think about all the things that they would do with my placenta, selling it and all that type of stuff and 
honestly, if I, I'm not the type, I don't want to consume it. I don't want to encapsulate it. I don't want to eat it or anything. And then honestly, I'm too scared to like bury it in my yard or something like that. Just in the fear that like an animal or something would dig it up and eat it. And then I'm like, well, that was useless. So <laughs> I'm not opting to keep my placenta. If someone along the line does take my placenta, sells it or does something unethical with it, they'll have to answer to God because I can only do so much. So that's my take on it. And then along with the delayed cord clamping, I'm also going to want delayed bathing. And I might not even have them bathe the baby at the hospital. I might do that myself at home. Just because I want the, I think it's the vernix, right? To be able to nourish his skin. I don't know if he's coming late or what. And I know sometimes their skin can get a little dry and flaky and just keeping his skin moisturized with that as long as possible would be a priority. So definitely gonna go for delayed bathing and cord clamping. This next one's kind of big for me. I don't know why, it just, you see TV shows and movies and you're just like, that, that actually happens and I don't want it to happen to me. But like, I don't want my baby to go to the nursery. I want my baby to stay in the room with me. So I'll be opting to have the uh, baby in the room with us of course, barring if there's no issues and he doesn't have to go off to the NICU or anything, we're going to have him stay in the room with us because I can, my mind cannot handle the possibility of thinking that he might be switched at birth. I can't. I can't deal with that. That's just one of my irrational fears that I need calmed. And having him in the room, I mean, besides he needs to be with his mom and dad anyway, right? But having him in the room will just kind of relieve that irrational fear of mine. I mean, I guess it's not irrational, it happens, right? But um, he'll definitely be in the room with us as long as there's no other issues to where he has to go to the NICU or anything like that for procedure or anything. And then finally, visitors. So, I do get overwhelmed with a lot, when there's a lot of people, right? I like to keep things simple. A little bit on the private side. So originally my thought was absolutely no hospital visitors whatsoever. None. However, I've made an exception for three people and those three people will come and be able to visit the hospital once the baby is born. But that's it. We're not having any more visitors than those three. That is my birth plan as a first time mom. I think hopefully it's not too unrealistic hopefully and prayerfully things go as planned right um no complications in the case of an emergency where they have to do a c-section fine go ahead take care of it you know it's not the end of the world if i have to get a c-section or anything i just prefer to do things you know naturally <laughs> with an epidural <laughs> but yeah that's my birth plan if you have given birth before and there was like some essential part of your birth plan that you just could not live without and you were like no every mama needs to know this let me know in the comments below so overall you could say we're we're ready for the baby again i've mentioned in my previous videos that we have the bedside nursery ready which i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the bedside nursery because and this will probably be the last chance I get to do that before the baby gets here. Hopefully, you know, because hopefully he's coming soon, right? Um, but yeah, let's go see the bedside nursery and his bath time setup. All right, so here is the bedside nursery. We ended up just moving our bed over. It was centered in the bedroom. We just moved it over closer to the window to make more space over here by uh, the bathroom. So the bassinet we decided to go with is this Graco, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's a Graco automatic rocker and it will rock, play music, vibrate, play white noise um, when the baby cries. Hopefully he likes it, you know. And then we have this changing table here. We've got all his diapers sorted uh, by size. So under here we've got 
our newborns in size one diapers with the wipes. Down here, I heard that these training pads eventually come in handy, especially like when the baby's sleeping in his crib and or in the bassinet just to like prevent blowouts from leaking onto the um, furniture and all that. We've got a few toys down here. I honestly just didn't know what to do with these, so that's why they're down here. <laughs> More toys, lots of elephants. And then some more size one diapers. So that's all there on the changing table. And then we've got the pad and a cover. I also got a, this is actually from my classroom. I just repurposed it. So up here we've got onesies. Well, I guess these are the sleepers. So we have newborn and zero to three month size sleepers and onesies. We don't exactly know how big he's going to be. Doctor was estimating around eight pounds. And then down here I've got some burp cloths. I think in here I've got, let's see, let's look at it. <laughs> some gloves, passies, Oh, well, I guess that's all it is. Some uh, gloves and passies. I've got the nasal, what is this thing called again? Is it a nasal aspirator? I've got some aquaphor. Um, Another nasal aspirator, if that's what it's called. Gripe water. Thermometer. Mylocon. More gas relief. And then we've got little nail trimming and nail filing set. I think I probably want to opt for it eventually in the future getting the electric one that I've seen online, but we'll stick with that for now. Here we've got oops, just a bunch of little socks to go with when changing him. I think we've got some breastfeeding things. So we've got a little pump here. This is a manual pump. I don't know why I need this. I do know why, I just don't remember why. <laughs> um, breast pump wipes. Breastfeeding pads or breast pads. Breast leak, whatever you call them. What are these called? I don't know what anything's called, do I? Nursing pads, that's what they are. <laughs> They're nursing pads. <laughs> and then, of course, on this last shelf, we have the rest of the nursing pads. Um, nipple butter. And then I have my breast pump here, which, again, I have not. This thing scares me. <laughs> I need to sanitize those. I guess I'll go ahead and look at this today, probably, figure out how to use it. Ooh, okay. So, I'm gonna put this up here, actually. So that's everything we have as far as the bedroom, bedside nursery. Um, in the bathroom, I've got just a little bit set up for him. So we've got some towels here, cleaning, lotion, soap and lotion and all that organized right here under the sink. And then a basket full of wash towels for him. Everything else is just my stuff that I had to organize. And then we've got his little bath little tub here and then the blooming bath which I plan to put 
in the uh, the tub is behind this curtain is got some organization that needs to be done so I'm not going in there but that's where the tub is and then his bath stuff is all right here all right that's all I have for today I feel like we're ready for the baby of course maybe not 100% mentally prepared but definitely logistically I think we're prepared for him we have everything he'll need in the beginning if there's stuff that he still needs along the way we'll just get it as we go hopefully next time you guys see me the baby will be here we are rooting him on his due dates two days from today that I'm recording so just be praying for us keep us in your prayers and we will see you next time go ahead like comment subscribe if you want to keep following this journey with us Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.